Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, keeping it free, .blogspot.com. You know, now that the dust has cleared a little bit on this Michael Brown situation in Ferguson, Missouri, and now that we have more facts, let's talk about them. Right? Now let me say this first. Understand my position. I view police as public servants. I view myself as having been harassed several times in my life unfairly by police. Right? I've had a gun pulled on me by either a security guard or a cop. I'm not sure. Right? I'm someone who openly says that if I were a member of the jury in the Sean Bell case, the Amadou Diallo case, the Osmane Zongo case, the Rodney King case, I would have voted to convict. Right? When I encounter cops, frequently I don't like the tone. I don't like the fact that they don't realize that I'm a citizen who's helping pay their salary. I do feel the United States has a problem with law enforcement's treatment of African Americans. Right? So understand, if I have a bias, it actually flows toward the black men who have to deal with police officers. Right? But... All of that said, this Michael Brown case, now that I know a little bit about it, and keep in mind, the information is coming out moment by moment. I'm cautious about this case. I'm very cautious about this case. For a few reasons. Right? First, the police officer has a fractured eye socket. How did he get that fractured eye socket? They're conflicting reports, right? But understand, before Michael Brown gets killed, understand that a scuffle takes place inside the police car with Michael Brown outside the police car. Right? Somehow, the end result of this scuffle is that the police officer in question here, and it's a 28-year-old cop, it's not a grizzled veteran, gets punched in the face and apparently has a fractured eye socket. Right? That's a big piece of information. How did he get it? If it's because, as some witnesses allege, He's trying to pull 6'4", 300-pound Michael Brown into his police car. Then the cop's out of line. But if it's because Michael Brown aggressively came over to the police car and punches the cop, right, while he's on the offensive, then to me that would show that the cop had something to be concerned about, that the cop had to fear for his own safety. Understand, too, that car scuffle that results in the police officer getting a fractured eye actually also involves the police officer's gun going off. Right? Now, we need to know why that gun went off. Was the cop trying to shoot Michael Brown then? Or was Michael Brown reaching for the cop's gun and scuffling with the cop while trying to get the cop's gun and use deadly force? Right? So, I have to be blunt with you. The cop's fractured eye socket bothers me. 
You don't have this dynamic in the Sean Bell case, the Amadou Diallo case, the Osman Zongo case, or the Rodney King case. The other thing that bothers me is the fact that the Michael Baden autopsy, right? And Baden is a personal hero of mine. He's a guy who I'm very grateful the family contacted here because you know Baden's a guy whose work is credible. But his autopsy doesn't show any shots to Michael Brown's back. Right? I encourage everyone to Google the Baden autopsy. Understand, this was commissioned by the family. Right? Understand, Baden is a guy who has done autopsies in the past that haven't coincided with the official version of events. Right? He's a free thinker. His autopsy doesn't show any shots in Michael Brown's back. Now, why is that troubling? First, it contradicts the recollections of a couple of the witnesses. Right? No shots in the back indicate that Michael Brown is not shot while he's moving away from the police car. Right? I'm troubled by that. All six shots are from the front. That bothers me. Right? Michael Brown is facing the police officer when he's shot. Right? To me, that raises questions. In fact, dare I say, in, the, in legal jargon, that raises doubts about what went down, right? In other words, we know Michael Brown's involved with a scuffle with the cop where the cop gets a broken eye socket, right? Then there's a point where Michael Brown moves away from the police car. I think everyone seems to agree with that. Then he gets shot facing the officer. Right now, what I'd like to know is, is the autopsy inconsistent with the idea of Michael Brown then charging the police officer right because if Michael Brown is running at the police officer after already being involved in a scuffle with the officer that leaves the officer with a fractured eye socket then an argument can be made if the officer then shot Michael Brown, that shooting would be justified. Right? That argument can be made. Right? So I'd like to get more information on exactly whether the autopsy is consistent or inconsistent with Michael Brown coming at the cop. Interestingly enough, in that autopsy, and Baden didn't have access to Michael Brown's clothes, but in that autopsy, right, apparently there's no evidence that the gunshots were from very close range, right? The gun could have been several feet away from Michael Brown, right, several feet away from Michael Brown, right? Also, the autopsy indicates that Michael Brown is shot several times in the arm. Right? Now, let's just think it through for a second. Right? Is that consistent with Michael Brown having his hands up above his head? Right? If Michael Brown is surrendering and has his hands up above his head, as some of these reports indicate, if you're trying to assassinate Michael Brown, would you be shooting his arm? Right? Is that, is that plausible? 
right? Because he has several shots in his arm. Are the shots in his arm consistent with the idea of him raising his hands before being shot? Or are they consistent with Michael Brown charging at the cop and the cop opening fire? Right? So I have a problem with this case. This case to me is a little bit different than the Sean Bell case in which I believe the cops are guilty. The Amadou Diallo case in which I believe the cops are guilty. The Osman Zongo case in which I believe the cops are guilty. The Rodney King case in which I believe the cops are guilty. Right here, I'm not so sure. Right here, there are a few questions. The autopsy could have implicated the police officer. But it didn't. Right? The autopsy could have backed up the witnesses who said Brown was shot in the back. But it didn't. Right? Also, if Brown is walking down the street peacefully and a cop car pulls up. Let's say the cop said, you know, the F word and get on the sidewalk as one witness alleges. Okay, fair enough. How exactly does Brown then end up leaning into the police car and engaging in a scuffle with the officer? Right? Also, is it credible that an officer in a car would then decide to grab a 6'4", 300-pound guy who's peacefully standing outside the car and then try to drag him through the window into the cop car? Is that believable to you? Right, so as the facts evolve, right, for those of you concerned about civil rights, for those of you outraged by cases like the Sean Bell, Diallo, Zongo, King case, and countless others in the country, right? Here in the United States, we do have a problem with police being unfair, in my opinion, to black males, right? We do. At least, I firmly believe we do. But if you're, if you're interested in civil rights and if you're interested in making sure that public servants right, don't violate those civil rights, I think you need to be cautious in looking at this case because the facts don't quite line up. Right? There's a video of Michael Brown, right, and I'm sorry, it looks like Michael Brown to me. I know some public reports are saying, oh, it's a victim who looks like Michael Brown. I'm, it's a suspect who looks like Michael Brown. But it's clear to me that Michael Brown was involved in, at least in my opinion, right, Michael Brown was involved in the theft of um, cigars from a convenience store. Now at the end of that video you're gonna notice as Michael Brown leaves the store, right, this is the robbery that takes place right before the shooting. As Michael Brown leaves the store you're gonna notice that the clerk comes up to him and the clerk confronts him. I want you to, as you look at that video, look at Michael Brown's reaction. Keep in mind, he knows he hasn't paid for the cigar, uh, the cigars, right? He knows he's in the wrong here, right? He knows he's robbing the place. As the clerk comes up to him, it looks to me like Michael Brown turns around and threatens the clerk. 
right? He's not back foot, he's front foot, right? The clerk comes over to him. Michael Brown turns around and goes like this, as if to say, what you going to do? What's your next move? Okay, now that works on an unarmed clerk. Is that the move he did on the cop? Right? And did that move involve the cop getting a broken eye socket? Right? If you're interested in this case, at least the facts of this case, if this case represents an actual case for you, and not an opportunity to push an agenda regardless of the facts, then those are the questions that need to be asked. How did the cop get the fractured eye socket? And why does the autopsy not show any shots in Michael Brown's back? Also, how does Michael Brown have shots on an arm, right, when he's supposed to have had his hands above his head, right? Is the autopsy consistent with that version of events? I'm cautious about this case. Let me hear from you. I understand there's conflicting eyewitness testimony right but just understand some of that testimony is inconsistent with the Baden autopsy right understand that Baden autopsy can be seen a few ways right I believe it's also helpful to the officer let me hear from you if you disagree you know here online in this YouTube account, Esquire777, I try to take on edgy topics like this, and we try to look at the evidence, right? If you feel that I am omitting some evidence regarding this case, or if you feel that I am misconstruing any facts or any evidence or the autopsy, then please, Leave those comments here in the comment section to this video. But this case bothers me, right? Because quite frankly, if the cop were in his car and Michael Brown then came and aggressively scuffled with the cop, breaking the cop's eye socket, reaching for the cop's gun, then if he backs away from the car and then charges at the cop as the cop leaves the car, right, at 6'4", 300 pounds, all of us should ask ourselves, what would we do in that situation? Right, this situation might not be analogous to Rodney King or Osman Zongo. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.